This is Privacy Notes, the podcast. 24.5% of Nigerians have their data captured online. This includes personal information such as date of birth, contact information, occupation, and details of people close to you. Have you ever wondered how your personal information is processed? Who has access to it? Who is the controller of your personal information, which has a valuation of about $240, depending on who you ask? On this episode of Privacy Notes, Orina Okune and Michael Shile from TaxTech will discuss all you need to know about personal data processing. Hello, everyone. We are back in the studio for episode eight of Privacy Notes, the podcast. This podcast is brought to you by TaxTech, a software development, cybersecurity and data protection compliance company. And the NDPR Academy is a training and certification arm of TaxTech for data protection training. I am still Irina. And with me here is Benga. How are you doing today, Benga? Hi, Irina. Good to see you again. It's good to be in the studio. Fantastic. All right, so for this episode, we'll be talking about personal data processing, what you should know. So you might have heard us mentioning personal data several times in this podcast. And that's because that's what the NDPR, which is the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation, revolves around. Recall last week, we spoke about the objectives of the NDPR and what it seeks to protect. So we'll go right into this. I was still talking about uh, data processing. Incidentally, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, released a list of current organizations that have actually complied with the NDPR and have done the statutory data protection audits with them. So at the moment, there are about 588 on that list as of today. And this is pretty funny when you consider the fact that the eligible organizations in Nigeria alone are at least 1.5 million. So if only 588 are actually on that list right now, then as you're an organization, you might want to be very <laughs> worried. I mean, let me not say worried now, but you might want to consider this and make sure you get your organization on that list as fast as possible. The penalties um, still apply, remember? You could actually be doing as much as 2% of your global revenues or say, about 10 million naira in penalties in the event that you are involved in a data breach as penalties. So you don't want to go there. You don't want to be on that side, on the wrong side of the law here. So you might want to, I mean, get a DPC, a data protection compliance organization to help you put through the process of getting, making sure you're compliant with the NDPR. And of course, tax tech is a data protection compliance organization. Just talk to us and we'll render all the relevant help you need. All right. So today we actually have someone special in house. We have Stella, Stella Waitre with us. Stella Weche, incidentally, is actually an alumna of the NDPR Academy. The last diet we had in Q2 2020, she actually participated in both the foundation course and the practitioner course. So, yes, we could actually say we have a data protection practitioner in house right now. Stella, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, you sound so humble there. Come on, I know you're much more active than this. Stella, how are you? I'm doing well. All right, thank great, you. Good great. to be here. Oh, fantastic. Because Stella is actually a staff of GT Bank, so she's a banker, and again, now she had to add you know the data protection bit of it to our she likes it to our cv now so she's not just a banker she's a banker and as well as a data protection practitioner so stella it's good to have you here i mean because of this show you're going to be talking a lot about your experience with the npr academy and of course your thoughts on data protection generally in relation to the topic that we're discussing today we'll take a very quick break and we'll be right back We are back. This is still Privacy Notes, the podcast brought to you by NDPR Academy and Tax Tech. So we're talking about personal data processing. So Benga, I mean, I know that personal data, the definition is quite broad. Can you just give us you know, a general overview of what it is about So before we dive right into our topic today? Okay, so now personal data, it's good to actually know we have Stella right here. So I will even be deferring to her this time around. What we're trying to do is, of course, we have an alum now of the NDPR Academy right here now. So why don't we even test us and see what we've been able to do? Let's even see what our efforts in our time as a student of the NDPR Academy is. So I'll be pushing that question back to you. Then I'll take it from there as well. So Stella, let's go. In your opinion, in your thoughts, I mean, what do you understand by personal data? Okay, so when I hear personal data, what comes to mind is 
every detail about you. It starts with your name to your address, your social media handles, mm. your identification number, bank details. It could also be your pictures, your genetic information, your health information, whatever it is that can be linked to you. That's what I would classify as personal data. Yeah, that's a fantastic response. I totally agree with you. Personal data basically is any information relating to a data subject. And of course, according to the NDPR, we established that a data subject is a citizen of Nigeria or anyone that's always resident in Nigeria. So according to the NDPR, as a data subject, your personal data involves all these details you just mentioned there, your name, your address, your photographs, bank details, identification number. Any online identifier, you have basically your physical, physiological, genetic, mental, economic, cultural, social identity. Entity. I mean, the list goes on and on. Whatever it is that can be linked to you as a data subject, including even your MAC address, you know, your IP address, your IMEI number, MISCI and all that. So all these details sum up what your personal data really is. So in the course of this conversation, we're trying to make it as practical as possible. Once again, we still have Stella Wichu here. So we're going to be looking into a few other questions there. And the next one we're going to be asking here is, when you look at data processing, you know, there are some principles, right, that we expect every data controller to follow in the processing of personal data. So Stella, you want to help us with all that? I mean, we did all this in the NDPR Academy. So what we're actually trying to do is flaunt what we've done in the NDPR Academy so the world can actually see why they need to sign up with the NDPR Academy. Okay, based on what we were taught, there are six principles of personal data processing. These six principles, they come in their order of hierarchy. Mm. So we start with lawfulness. Lawfulness is very key. Then next is specificity, adequacy, accuracy, storage, and security. So for short, you can use an acronym, SLAs, for that. What did you call it? SLAs. That's yeah. interesting. Because we actually called it six P's. But then this is a nice twist to it. I'm still not getting that. Okay. SL, you want to help me with that? SLAs. Okay. Still again. Um, you know what we mentioned? Lawfulness. Oh, L-S-A. Yeah, so I just oh, fantastic. Ah, okay, okay. Urena, you get the gist, I, I, right? I do get it. Okay, I, I, I actually didn't yeah. get that part. I got confused when she said S. I mean, so LSAs. Please. So, like, when we're in school back in the day, then, what you do, what you're trying to memorize, yeah. then, to just acronym. uh, pick up the acronyms and... <laughs> This you is a nice way to... Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Stella, for this. Uh, right. Welcome. So, Stella, you spoke about the six principles of personal data processing, but we want to know in details, even if it's just one, I know, just try to give us, you know, insights on what it is about, really. Thank you, Irena. Okay, so before I narrow down on one of the principles, I'd like to define what personal data processing itself is. Um, this is any activity that is carried out on personal data of a data subject, whether it's manual or automated. Okay, so back to the principle, I'd like to choose lawfulness. So lawfulness literally has to do with consent. It has to do with the fact that I give you my data, I give you my name, or I give you my email, whatever personal detail has to do with me. I give it to you and... And once you act on it, whether manually or whether automated, that has to do with processing. And because I gave it to you, it shows my consent, which means that it is lawful and it is legal because I gave it to you without coercion. No, that's great. Okay, so what you mean is if I give you my name and my email address, once you have that information, as I give it to you with my consent, yes. that's already data processing. Yes, please. Okay. That's interesting. All right. I believe the point where you act on that data that has been given to you mm. is what makes it processing. Processing. So if you give me data and I don't do anything, do anything with it, I'm not it. actually processing that data. Okay. Correct. Mm. Okay. 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 Mm. okay. 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 So, I mean, uh, this is something that it's, you know, is really interesting, but we only spoke about one. So, I mean, there are the five other ones on uh, data protection processing procedures. So, if you want to know details about this, you should actually join our next class. Uh, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. And we are still here on Privacy Notes, the podcast brought to you by Tax Tech and the NDPR Academy. Of course, we still have Stella here with us. Um, before we went on break, she was explaining briefly about uh, the principles of data processing and she looked at lawfulness as one of them specifically. On that lawfulness, I mean, we look at a couple of other things too. So she only mentioned consent. There are about five, I think, five or six more. Yeah. Five more precisely, actually, that she has not mentioned right. Now, if you want to know much more about this, you might want to join our next class. That's the NDPR Academy found 
foundation and practitioner class. The next one is the Q3 2020 scheduled to hold in September, September 18th precisely for the foundation class and September 25th and 26th for the practitioner class. You might want to just go sign up right away. Just visit www.ndpracademy.ng so you can sign up for this class. We still have about a month or there about less than a month to the class. Not, I mean, of course, a little over a month. Sorry, my apologies. So you might want to just take advantage of this time to sign up and get prepared for this class. So going further, I just also wanted you to also know, we mentioned the RDB last week. We talked about this, that our report data breach platform, which was recently developed by Taxi Technology Limited Tax Tech, and it's live now. So you could just visit www.rdb.ng. What RDB simply does for you is it allows you to report any data breach you experience at any point, and we're able to help you escalate this to the relevant authorities. So this is actually a plus into what we've been able to do at Tax Tech. Remember, we are your plug for software development services, cybersecurity services, and data protection compliance services. So we keep developing solutions to make life much more easier for you. And in terms of data protection, we've been able to also play well in the space with our innovative solutions that actually help both your audits and your compliance processes. Of course, the NDPR Academy is our training arm, which gives you both training and certification on the subject of data protection. So Stella, let's talk about the NDPR Academy very quickly before we let you go. I mean, you were part of the class in Q2 2020. You just want to tell us maybe in a few seconds your experience in the class. So what actually motivated you? Most people we know just want to take, maybe let me just do the foundation course next time I'll take the practice. But you did both in one breath. I mean, how are you able to do that? Okay, I was a student in the past class for the last quarter. And then the reason or what motivated me to take in the class was as a result of COVID. Mm. Um, you know, COVID came and then it showed that our jobs weren't really safe again. It showed that we had to ensure that we were relevant and preparing for the future of work. And as we know, data mm. is the new oil. And then it has to be protected Just as anyone with valuables And money would always seek to protect it With the bank or wherever they can mm. There was also a need for data to be protected And this is a new space, it's very green Correct And yes. we don't have a lot of people playing that space I'm not sure we have up to 500 data protection officers in Nigeria mm. And I thought that it would be somewhere I would like to play in You know. Okay, I'll say data protection compliance organizations DPC is licensed by data Currently, I think we are less than 80 at the Whoa. moment mm. So, except if you're talking about data protection officers now we might have a lot more than I mean maybe they're about that's those that have actually taken the trainings of some sort which is part of what we do at Tax Tech incidentally we've trained over 250 individuals in the last um, 10 months now yeah. not even we have months, yeah. inception December we're 2019 started, yeah, so. in the last 8 months precisely yeah. about 8 months in trained over if you say 500 so I mean it, we probably have well over 50% of that number wow and we're just one organization you want to clap for us right <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was just a joke though so let me allow you finish there mm. yeah so I also wanted to be relevant in the future of work because the future of work in the 21st century is changing greatly and I don't want to be left out mm. I really wanted to be relevant mm. that's why I took the course seeing that the GDPR says that businesses will not be conducted with countries that are not data protection compliant okay. and Nigeria had to be data protection compliant as at January 2019 so I told yeah. myself oh this is a space I would like to work in because I like to say, oh, I'm a thought leader in one of these space because I don't think there's anybody that might really come out now to say, I have 20 years experience in this field. I feel mm-hmm. like we're all learning on the job. That's true. And I would also like to learn on this job oh. and go the long haul. That's why I signed up for it. Fantastic, fantastic. And since you signed up for it, have you had reasons to practice in some way or has it actually impacted on your life or your work or generally your approach to things now? Before, yes, I mean, it has greatly because prior to now when you have to sign up for emails, um, subscriptions or anything new. One thing I noticed is I just click I accept, I agree, all terms mm-hmm. and conditions. But right now, no, I'm going to take my time. I might not read it all, but I scan through to see, do I really give my consent? Do I want my data to be used for all of this? When I go to my social media platforms, all third parties that have granted unlawful access to my data, I disconnect everything. I try to read it to be sure that they are using my data for what they say it is, mm-hmm. for the lawfulness I'm also looking at when I'm signing up for something that has to do with agriculture or and I see the list of the information they require. I want to ask myself one of also the principal adequacy like is this really right? This is an agricultural company. What do they need, need maybe my dress for? size for? 
So mm. I don't give you something that I don't think you need. Instead, okay. I resort to sending an email to say, based on what I'm applying for, I don't think you need this information. So mm. I'm really now particular about what data that I give out. And I try to tell my friends before you say yeah, I, I consent, say that, before yeah. you say I agree, mm. make sure you read it very well. Don't just consent and, you know, just put yourself in something that you're not ready for. Yeah, that's true. Right. We recall in one of our episodes, we talked about, you know, the privacy mistakes that people make and how you can avoid it. So, mm. I mean, don't just click accept, you know, that's a really important one. And there's also a fun fact, you know, she spoke about the future of work and the whole space of COVID-19 and everything changing and everything evolving, really. Data protection, it's a great area in Nigeria, but mm. I mean, internationally, it's really big. So if you know the IAPP, that's the International Association of Privacy Professionals, he estimates that the 2019 global annual average salary of a data protection officer at 100 thousand US dollars. Did you hear that? Wow. Per annum. Wow. Per annum, yeah. A whooping hundred thousand. So I mean uh, okay now coming home to Nigeria, our exchange rate currently it's flung to it still, but I think it's about three hundred eighty naira to a yes. dollar now. So that means you're earning about thirty eight million naira. Am I correct? That's uh, thirty eight million naira yeah. per annum. Stella, how much is your salary? <laughs> don't tell me, no, just don't kidding. Don't <laughs> <me>. I'm <laughs> of treated course, let's well. not go there. Oh great, great. Good to know you're treated uh, well. All right, fantastic. That's but, a nice answer. Yeah. yeah. So if you earn thirty eight million per annum. Um, that puts you at about 3.2 um, million. No, what am I saying? Yeah, thereabouts per month. Amazing. I'll be buying my private jet. Amazing, you know? <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, yeah. yeah, you should see us flying around very soon. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So let's come back home. Let's come back home. So on our data protection trainings, you know, we have one, like Binga said, we have one coming up on September 18th, the foundation class and the practitioner class coming up the next week. That's the 25th and the 26th. You want to hop on this class. So you just spoke about the benefits that you have. There's really much more that you need to know. And our data protection experts will be explaining more in details about this. This is just the surface level. So join our next class. And don't forget about RDB. Right, please go visit rdb.ng. So in case you have any data breaches, you can report that and let us know what your feedback is. So it's been a good one on today's show. Definitely. I don't think we want to take any more breaks at this time. Stella, do you have anything, anything last else you want for us? Tell us, right? I really want to encourage everyone to really protect their data. I mm. mean, the last thing you want happening to you is to lose your identity. Once your data is taken, your identity can be destroyed so you know protect your data just the way you protect your valuables because your data is you Thank mm. you. The data is you. Mm. That's a, that's the a, data that's is you. you. Mm. Or you are your data. Mm. <laughs> okay. I'll go with your data is you. And so don't forget, you can still follow us on social media, Tax Tech. You can visit our website, www.taxtech.com.ng. Visit and follow us on social media, Tax Tech NG, on Instagram, on Twitter, and of course, on LinkedIn as well. The NDPR Academy, we already gave you the handle earlier on. You still follow us at, at NDPR Academy underscore. So you can follow us on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and on Twitter as well. And of course, visit our website to sign up for the next class coming up in September. Okay. Also, you can send us an email at info at ndpracademy.ng if you have further questions about this training. And we'll be happy to respond to you. So that will be the big last size of our show for today. Till next week, I'm Irina. And I'm Olubenga. And I should correct the misconception, though. I think I should just do that. I don't know if it's very, very relevant right now. Michael Olubenga, Benga, it's all one person, all right? So you can call me Michael, you can call me Olubenga, you can call me Benga. It all works. I think I'll sign off on that note. Thank you. <laughs>